Okay, so in this video, I'd like to talk about how linear structural analyses or analyses of linear models uh, fit within a nonlinear analysis uh, framework. Okay, so I think it's my opinion based on uh, teaching linear structural analysis matrix methods many times that we put too much emphasis on the stiffness matrix. Okay, in that once we've found the stiffness matrix, like that's it, like that's really you know our first objective and then once we have that you know we can find the nodal displacements uh, for any load vector piece of f all right so the you know the major steps you would go through with kind of the stiffness matrix first approach is shown down here okay so you know first we form the stiffness matrix all right which is AFF, you know, relating the displacements at the unconstrained degrees of freedom with the resisting forces at those uh, degrees of freedom. Okay, so form KFF or assemble KFF. All right, and then second step would be, you know, now that we have the stiffness matrix, you know, we can hit it with any uh, load vector. All right, so we would, you know, second step assemble a load vector. All right. And we want that external load vector to be equal to the, the resisting forces, right? Which we take for granted in linear structural analysis, right? Their resisting force and external loads are kind of one and the same. Okay, but you know, to, to find that solution, right, we you know just solve the linear system of equations and get the nodal displacements that satisfy equilibrium, right? And that's symbolically, you know, the matrix inverse. KFF inverse. Okay, so you know that's that works well. All right, it's perfectly fine, perfectly good. But when we go to analyze uh, linear models within a nonlinear framework, this emphasis on the stiffness matrix—it's uh, my opinion that it can lead to uh, conceptual issues. All right, where instead of emphasizing the stiffness matrix, you know, we should think first about the residual force vector, which is the difference between the external forces and the internal forces. Okay. And really for nonlinear problems, uh, the stiffness matrix uh, is a quote unquote shot in the dark uh, to get us uh, to zero residual, i.e. to get us to equilibrium. Although that shot in the dark is not always that bad uh, of a shot. All right. Um, but that's kind of what it is. All right. It helps us get from, from A to B essentially. Okay, but for a linear model uh, within a nonlinear framework that, again, that shot in the dark is extremely uh, accurate, all right? But the steps we go through to get to equilibrium are a little bit different uh, from what we did in linear analysis, okay? So, you know, assuming that we're starting at zero displacements, all right, we would assemble, you know, so zero displacements is right here, all right? we would assemble the corresponding resisting force, all right? So first step, PR, all right? And, you know, we'll just assume that that's, that's zero, but in general, you know, that's not always the case, okay? Especially, you know, when we go to load stepping uh, and, you know, uh, or time stepping, load incrementation type problems. The resisting force initially, uh, it's not going to be zero, but for this demonstration here, uh, let's just assume it's zero. But let's keep that step in mind, okay? But then, second step, we you know assemble the load vector just like we did before, okay? And then you know we note that you know, you know this and then right we note here, that, you know the difference between the you know the external loads uh, PF and the internal resisting forces PR, you know this residual is not zero, right? I'll just write that residual down here. It's a very easy uh, definition, but it's the difference between external loads and internal forces, but that's not equal to zero. So we know we have to, you know, do something, move somewhere, you know, move the needle uh, in order to get to uh, equilibrium, okay? So that's where step three comes in, which is, you know, assembling the stiffness matrix. So based on where we are at this point down here, drawn at the origin, all right, on the right-hand figure here, you know, we, we linearize our resisting force and 
we get to a stiffness matrix or a tangent stiffness, all right, which for a linear problem or a linear model, it's, it's kind of obvious, all right, but let's just kind of think of these things in a, a nonlinear uh, way, okay? So we have the stiffness matrix, and then step four is to solve for the nodal displacements, okay? So same thing as before, all right, we will solve for uf, okay? That's step four, okay? So the, you know, the figure on the left is, you know, stiffness matrix first, all right, and then load vector, and then displacement vector. The figure on the right is a little more amenable to nonlinear uh, structural analysis and the way of thinking uh, that goes on there, in that we have a residual, you know, obtained from the, you know, internal forces and the external forces. Then we go to stiffness to help us search uh, for uh, equilibrium, all right? But again, for a linear problem, that's obvious, or a linear model, that's obvious uh, within a nonlinear analysis, okay? But, you know, we have stiffness matrix, and then, you know, step four, we solve for the uh, nodal displacements, okay? So I, I hope this makes some sense. Again, it's a very subtle difference, something that needs to sink in, uh, but uh, I think it's very important uh, as we move forward to nonlinear uh, constitutive models and nonlinear geometry. Okay, thank you for watching.